BlackRock's biggest fear could soon become a reality. This is what the chairman of BlackRock mentioned earlier today. He explained what was the most successful trade in the last 10 years and he said that this trade could actually bring much more risk on the markets. And this is one of my fears. Over the last 10 years, the number one trade that people made money on was shorting liquidity. Right. Uh, I don't believe that's going to be the next great trade for the next 10 years. And shorting liquidity means you got out of bonds and bought more privates. And that trade worked. The question is, is that going to work now in the next 10 years? And, um, you know, when you see interest rates that in, in the credit space, in the intermediate place, earning 5 and 6 percent, that really is allowing you to take on a lot more uh, fixed income as a part of your portfolio, you're actually de-risking, but you're able to get your necessary returns through that mix. Well, before I say it to my colleagues, it does sound like that what happened mid-March uh, accelerated a Darwinian move in banks, where we have the larger get even yeah. larger, right. and made it so that we realized that we didn't need to learn to earn 2% if we just called Larry Fink, we could pick up 5 well, I think what happened in 2022, banks did not raise their deposits as fast as the Federal Reserve was raising rates. And the money market funds continue to adjust the rates every every 30 days, essentially, as their maturities were, are much shorter. And so you saw this giant arbitrage between what money market fund rates are or short-term bonds are versus deposits. And then you started having impairment with some of these banks related to their held a maturity account. And you that just precipitated a, a, a real re, 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 um reimagining how you're going to manage your portfolio. And so we saw a lot of uh, people move their portfolios out of the smaller banks that were that had yields that were much lower into the larger banks as we saw today in some of the earnings and into the money market funds. You know, we've seen over $500 billion of money leaving the banking system into the capital markets. And that's one of the pervasive things I talked about today. I talked about in my CEO letter that we're seeing a, um, a, a acceleration of movement out of the banking system into the capital markets. Um, and, and that continues on. You could ask the question, is that good or bad? We could all raise those questions. Um, the large banks are benefiting from this. The large market-making banks are benefiting it. And the capital markets are benefiting from this. And that's going to be a big societal question. How do we want to navigate this? We still have 4,400 banks. Is that the proper size? Can they perform in this type of atmosphere, especially as we move towards digitization of, the, of currency? Uh, how we change payments? And then the bigger, more existential issue, if... And I believe, as uh, we were talking about earlier, I believe interest rates are going to be higher for longer. So you're, because in, the camp, you're in the Jamie Dimon camp because he said the same okay. thing this morning. OK, I believe that, as I said in my seal letter a few weeks back, I believe inflation is going to be stickier for longer. In other words, I think we're going to have a four-ish percent floor in inflation. I think the numbers today kind of reconfirmed that. One of the main reasons why BlackRock stock was down earlier this year was the sake of the reason that he mentioned earlier, the fear of dumping the general bonds from the government simply because they're not paying enough and jumping towards private bonds. Definitely you can feel how complicated the economy has become. Larry Fink said that the inflation rates will be stickier for longer for the sake of the current war, the current geopolitical situation on the business level between countries. He said that certain economic policies or government policies simply will keep the inflation high where the chips will be imported, where the chips will be produced, where certain goods and services will stop being imported and has to be produced in each and every country. Simply because this complicated relationship between countries will come at a certain cost, at a certain price, and the countries are not aware of the cost and prices. Sure, they can speak out loud that we can dump the dollar, we can produce our own chips, we can actually uh, satisfy the needs of the country. And according to Larry Fink, at the end, when the countries do the final math, they will realize that a lot of them might not be able to be as independent as they want. He also said that currently we have over 4,000 different banks in the US. And he said uh, it's very complicated to see moving forward all of these banks operate on their own, right? He said that now the biggest banks won during this crisis, during this stress test and these conditions. He said that how these regional banks could survive moving forward when they cannot provide something that is unique, something that you know could trigger people to keep their money into it. He said $400 billion left the banking sector. They left towards going, according to him, in some of the biggest banks 
and towards some of the mine market funds. He said the money market funds, they don't have exposure to maturity. He didn't purchase bonds 5, 6, 7, 10 years ago and now losing tons of money. Something that happened with Silicon Valley Bank. He said they're much more favorable market structure for them. They have a lot of capital. They don't have as much as obligations and requirements and they're not restricted by certain laws such as the banks, regional or big banks. And a lot of things might sound very optimistic, bullish on, on the business, on the economy, on everything. But something that was not mentioned in this interview is that a lot of things received a pay cut of 30%. This is a little over $25 million of his personal salary because he didn't achieve 100% of what was expected of him. He achieved around 60 to 70% of what was expected from him as a result. So you understand that as much as positivity and, and you know, paying or portraying the nice picture, things are a little more complicated, a little more losses, a little less interest of risk orientation. Uh, people, especially now with AI, might actually rethink a lot of these strategies. Yeah.